America's annual price increase was worse than economists had forecast. That's right. Inflation hitting record high. Look at Biden just hitting record numbers on Isn't it everything. It's amazing how they always miss the mark. <laughs> you know, all these yeah. economists, they're PhD folks. And when they do budgets or uh, how much things are going to cost and, and what the increase and all that, they, they always, it's, I won't say always, but they almost always undershoot it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems to happen quite a bit. Their modeling is just a little bit off. Yeah. You know, they didn't account for a few different things. So the, the consumer price index rose 7.5% in the 12 months ending January, not adjusted for seasonal swings. The Bureau of Labor Statistics said Thursday it was the steepest annual price increase since February of 1982 and worse than economists had forecast. It was barely worse. They were forecasting 7.3. It ended up being 7.5. Stripping out food and energy prices, which tend to be more volatile, prices increased by 6% between January 21 and 2022. If we remove some of the data, then it actually wasn't that bad. Yeah. This is from CNN, by the way. Marking the largest increase since August of 1982. At that time, if you take out some of the stuff. Food prices rose 7% over the same period, while energy prices rose 27% led by fuel, oil, and gasoline prices. I felt that. Yeah. I felt that. Like, yeah, you have a truck. Last week, gas was just under $3. Like, was it? Yeah, I think it was like two ninety nine, maybe, two ninety eight, something like that. I filled up. Um, and then this week, I went to fill up, and I was like, wow. Yeah, it's a lot. Mm. It's too much. Close I don't to like it. Getting, uh, I paid. I think I paid three twenty nine, and then it's getting close to like the richer counties mm -hmm. where close, you live. Yeah, no, <laughs> it's getting close to four dollars. Yeah, a gallon. What about energy prices going up twenty seven percent? Isn't it weird? Well, the more that we go towards restricting the supply of affordable energy, the more energy prices end up going up. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on with Russia and all that stuff as well. But I don't see the energy prices really coming down with all the things that we're pushing towards. So people can go ahead and get used to that one. The Keystone Pipeline being shut down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> making fracking uh, extremely difficult. Yeah. Those types of things. Basically transitioning, uh, transitioning away from all of those dirty, terrible fossil fuels that are also slightly more affordable. But, oh, well, I guess that doesn't matter. In January alone, prices rose by 0.6%, including seasonal adjustments, the same rate as in December and more than economists had predicted. That served up some bad news for people who hoped the monthly data would indicate a slowdown of the price hikes. That did not happen. Prices increased across the board last month, including for housing, furniture, used cars, and health care. Food prices climbed 0.9% in January compared to just 0.5% in December. Nearly all grocery prices increased with only non-alcoholic beverages staying flat. That sounds like some BS to me because I tell you what, I went to Publix the other day and a 12 pack of Sprite Zero was $7.50. $7.50. Mm. That, that freaking thing was under five bucks before all this stuff happened. We always wait for the sale. Oh, yeah. I always go for the, the three, you know, buy three at Kroger and exactly. get them for, for 13 bucks. That's better. Mm -hmm. It's better. Energy prices also rose 0.9% last month, led by electricity costs. Now, most of you listening here probably know what's happening. Um, but we're going to play a video. Do you mm -hmm. have it queued up? We're I'm going to get that real quick. We're going to play a video by Dan Price so you know what everyone else is thinking happened. <laughs> but everybody knows, you pretty much know, or if you're new here, you're going to learn today. You're going to learn today that the, the main reason for this is we spent, I don't know, almost seven or eight, nine, ten <laughs> trillion dollars. A little, a little too much, whatever yeah. the number is. Yeah. Slightly too much yeah. money. We spent, I don't know, somewhere between eight and ten trillion dollars in the span of about a year and a half. Um, and what was it? I don't know. Almost 60 percent of it was newly created money. It was a pretty and good, so, pretty good portion of the new money. Yeah. When that happens, this is the after effects. And this is what we were talking about as they were spending all this money. This is what libertarians and some conservatives have been talking about for years. You got too With, much money chasing too few goods. Exactly. And so this is the just the natural consequences of introducing new money into the economy. And what happens is, and, so, and you want to talk about inequality, this is where real inequality comes from. Because the people closest to the money, so your big banks, your Wall Streets, your, your you know, large corporations that get this money first, well, they're the ones that see the less of the down effects. It's the consumers. It's the poor people, the people who get the money last or, 
or spend on the goods last. They're the ones who actually see the greatest uh, burden. They also see the greatest burden because, uh, well, this this one was different from in the past because we gave a lot of money directly to people. Uh, but these prices going up on energy and and housing and food and all of that, that affects people who have tighter budgets more than it affects people who are at the top. And sure, they're probably spending more money on things, but it's not as not as big of a deal whenever you still have a whole bunch of money left over at the end of the month. And so people who don't normally have a lot left over, but they're still dealing with higher prices, well, then they need to get paid more than the corporations have to pay them more. And then, well, the corporations need to raise their prices also. And uh, then we just have this upward spiral of inflation taking place. And uh, we're going to see what happens when the Fed starts to actually raise rates. There, some people are calling for up to seven rate increases this year, which is Ooh. a lot. It's a lot of rate increases. Let me play this damn price well, let video me, let real me just quick. pause for a quick birthday announcement okay matt happy birthday happy birthday matt so and we're not gonna sing that was it <laughs> good y'all job know, y'all know dan price right i've heard of him he's he makes dumb bleep quite a bit but this is this is why prices are going up folks it's not has doesn't have anything to do with inflation or modern monetary theory or spending more money than you have nothing to do with that no that's all great. Tyson just raised prices by 20%, citing inflation like it's some magical thing. This at a time when their profits are up 19% to a record $1.1 billion in the most recent quarter. Companies all over the place are making a killing by raising prices on all of us and blaming the magical inflation. He put inflation in quotes. <laughs> and it's magical, by the yeah. way. So if you're not watching, it's magical inflation with air quotes. Now, first off, he had the main theme from Inception playing way too loud in that video. He needed yeah. to mess with the levels there a little bit. Mm. But Great anyway. movie, by the way. So yeah, I, good stuff. We probably agree on that. <laughs> um, uh, and it, it, to Amanda's point, this is what I was going to say. Yes, their profits are up. Like the number that you see, the profits, the gross profits, they're up. But so is inflation. And so you have to take that into account because they're, the cost of goods is going up. The, the cost to create a bag of chicken is going up. So now they have to sell it for more. Yes, they may be taking in more gross profits, but you have to look at net and those different types of things as well as what is the future going to look like. Like the companies aren't stupid, and especially giant corporations like Tyson. They've been in the business for a long time. They're not dumb. They're not just raising prices for today, right? They have people and thinking of thinking up the stuff and people backing them up, mm-hmm. thinking up more Just stuff, looking on people. down the line. Jeff Bezos has a 200-year timeline, mm-hmm. I think, something like that. He, so like these people are thinking out years in advance on what's actually going to happen, and uh, they're obviously very smart people. They're not dumb. So it has nothing to do with raking in record profits. They're trying to stay in business. Yeah, and so there's a couple things. While there is, there's inflation going up, and while they're taking in that money, that there's also going to be inflation in the money that they are needing to take in. And like you said, they have to account for the future as well. They have to account for all of their increased costs and the future increase in costs. The other thing that people have to realize is that corporations are always trying to charge as much as they can for everything, okay? So let's just call that greed because everyone's greedy. They're always trying to charge as much as they can. And when we do things that restrict the supply and increase the demand artificially by giving people a bunch of fake money to go use on stuff, the prices are going to go up. Whether people morally disagree with it or not, that's what's going to happen because corporations are always trying to get the most that they can get for whatever their products are. And so if you don't like the fact that they're doing that, then stop giving people fake money to go buy people's goods with. That is always going to raise the prices of everything. Or you're going to end up setting price caps on stuff and you'll end up with no goods to buy. But those are your two options right there. Either prices are going to go up via supply and demand or they'll go down via supply and demand. No one complains when the, you know, the price of gas went down to $1.50 a gallon during the COVID pandemic when things were locked down. That was supply and demand. But Charlie complained about it going up to three thirty. dollars That's also supply and demand. I know you know that. But th- this is what always happens, all right? The, and it was easy to know that this was going to happen. This is not a shock. 
This is not something that is unprecedented. This is not something that was unpredictable. The, it, it's very easy to know when this is going to happen. You got too much money chasing too few goods. If you want to change this dynamic, then you want to have more goods meeting the actual demand. Not going to say too many goods because that could create too much deflation. And too much deflation can end up being real bad as well. But we need to allow the equilibrium to equilibriize. <laughs> to to uh, pen, pendulum-wise. Yes. Pendulumize yes. to swing from one scale to the other. It's All just right. a classic case of the dog chasing the fairy. I thought you were, like your granddaddy used to say, mm-hmm. I thought you were going to say mismanagementism. Well, that too. Yeah. But, you know, I, the dog chasing the fairy is what, that's what happens because it just keeps floating away. <laughs> and depending on how big the river is, in this case, <laughs> in this case, it's, you know, it's in the trillions. But fairies float. Yeah. Well, float away, though. Okay. That's I got good. you. And you're chasing them. Okay. But the dog don't float. Exactly. Now this is all making sense. Yeah, you have to kind of use your intuition, and be, <laughs> you have to be intuitive to put, yeah. put them together. I got yeah. you. Okay. So. Well, let's uh, let's go on to uh, Congress 